Hello everyone, welcome back to another bog garden update. This is July 27th, 2023. And starting off here with our large bog, we've got our Lacophila starting to come back from the dead. As you can see, it is doing great. The beautiful coloration in this picture is unlike the one I have from the store, which we will get to in a little bit. The cranberry from it is also doing fantastic. Our caddis bee here, as you can see, has flowered a while back and uh, that flower is pollinated. We can expect seeds from it this fall, which is going to be amazing. Uh, Utricularia is starting to pop up all over the background here and our capes and banata is finally starting to fill in. We do have the occasional, it looks like, rotundifolia, uh, spatulata, and other mixed sundew in the bunch too. Speaking of, we have some Philiformis sprouts also finally starting to come up all around here. And speaking of Philiformis, our Tracei, Philiformis Florida Green, and our Butterfly Valley have all completed their flower cycles for the summer. I wish I got an update here while they were still flowering. I apologize for that. But as you can see, we will be getting a bunch of seeds spreading all over the place. Now our Scarlet Bell over here is uh, still kind of looking a little bit on the scraggly side of things, which is kind of sad. I wish it was a bit more bushier, kind of like this one over here by now, but I digress. Anywho, Swaniana on the other hand, look at that. It's looking like a nice deep maroon Darlingtonia almost, but I digress on that as well. It's still looking fantastic nonetheless. And then our Flava, as you can see, holy crap, that thing's just taken off. Remember how it was just a small little bunch of pictures originally, guys? I mean, just... Look how that's filled in. I mean, it, it's just bushy. And then, of course, we've got our purpurea already starting to work on its secondary layer of pitchers, and we should have a flower off that next year. Can't wait for that. Speaking of, you can see probably in there, kind of buried in there, we have some sphagnum growing in just kind of under some of these pitchers. And I've been occasionally pulling the sphagnum heads off that, and we will get to what I've been doing with that later on here in just a little bit. As you can see for the smaller pot, pots, we do have a bunch of sundews starting to kind of grow all over in them. A little bit of bisquamata starting to pop up here and there and a couple of them as well. Uh, we're just gonna still let those do their things. I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with those yet, but we will see. And then of course, obviously I already showed you guys the medium bog here. Our Scarlet Bell over here is doing absolutely fantastic. I have gone ahead and moved the Lacophila from the little small pot to here, just a full pot transplant to reduce stress. So didn't even disturb the roots, didn't do anything with the soil, it just entire mass just popped in there. Uh, Bisquamata has spread over here, which is going to be great. Can't wait to see that thrive. Did move some of the fly traps around, so you can see they did get a little tiny bit of stress because I did have to kind of move them weirdly, but they're starting to heal back up nicely. That one I didn't move, so it's doing fine. This Capensis I did move, so you can see a little wilted a little bit, but now you can see new growth coming up right out of the center. And then, of course, I did get one of my Ventratas back. This is a Ventrata I got back from my brother. Now, I did bring it out here because it turned out uh, the soil did get infested somehow within his tent. I don't know how, but uh, yeah, so it had a little bit of an infestation. I wanted to bring it out here to prevent the infestation to spread from my other plants. Now, as you can see, it did get a little sunburn after a couple weeks but you can see the crown is doing nice we do still have some new leaves coming off um now it as you'd see it like i said it did get infested um so that's why it's staying out here but i'm not too worried about it because as you'd see this basil still has nice green fresh growth and it's doing relatively well the basil got a little bit of sunburn but heck it's still got a pitcher coming in that it hasn't even dropped while this thing has practically dropped all its adult pitchers <laughs> so I'm not really too worried about it. If this one dies, it's not like I don't have plenty more. And speaking of, let's go check on them really quick, guys. Move out of my way, Nova. Anywho, to the grow tent. Starting off, we've got our star moss here that I pulled out of all our Pinguicula display planters and just kind of popped it in its own tray. Not sure what I'm going to do with this yet. Might decide to use it for terrariums. Might put it on the... Uh, waterfall that you guys sell out there by the bogs. I'm not sure yet, but it just looks great And so I kind of keep it around for now and Here's what I did with the heads of the sphagnum You can kind of see how there was a little mass of them right there at first and then kind of clumped together And now you can see how they're really growing 
Same thing I did here. You see all those little dark green portions are where heads were originally put, and then they started to just kind of take off and grow from there. And this is one month in. I will post a little short showing what it looked like beforehand. But yeah, this is basically uh, this is basically the tray one month later, and the sphagnum is doing well. I can't wait for it to form a complete carpet. So that way I can use it as top dressing for all the Nepenthes. Speaking of, moving on to our Ventratas here. You can see I've got another one vining. And you can see I already cut our other vine up. <laughs> this is the crown from our previous vine. And you can see that's the pot that it was in. And you can see no more vine there. But that's the crown of it. That's the pot. And there's our propagations, which as you can see for after a couple months have done very nicely. They've rooted, they've sprouted, we've got node activations on practically all of them. No issues, doing fantastic. Now I've got more Ventrata that I need. Our Pinguicula display planter, as you can see, is doing good. Our Lawiana kind of looks like a little iffy. I've kind of tried to move it out of the heat a little bit. I've been trying to figure out how to place it, and I'm going to actually... I've decided I'm actually gonna go ahead and move them into here, and I'm gonna use that round one as the uh, leaf pulling planter uh, for propagation since it's close to the light. But yeah, uh, they're still doing great, no issues yet. Um, but yeah, anywho. Uh, <laughs> our, our little Nepenthes here are doing absolutely wonderful. I am loving the Gymnum for it. I mean, just take, take a look at that picture. Absolutely stunning coloration and looks to it. It's gonna get nice and tubby. You can kind of already see how they really look. But this one is basically like my little bonsai of my Nepenthes right here. I just love my Talakmau more. This is the Talakmau, uh, uh, Gymnum Fora Talakmau. Uh, this is the Borneo Exotics BE, what was it? Four something, I forget, four, three, five, seven, or four, five, three, seven, I, I don't remember. Anywho, uh, this is my Ventricosa, as you can see, coming back up to health from a little issue. And as you can see, it is doing fantastic. A lot of new growth, same thing here with the Bloody Mary, but our Rebecca Sapporo on the other hand is practically donezo. <sighs> pinguicula, pinguicula, pinguicula. As you can see, all of our leaf pulling is doing fantastic still. You can actually see there is a tiny, tiny little bud starting to form just at the end of that leaf there. Kind of hard to see, but it's there. Um, and then you see these ones down here have just been all flowering like mad. They do not stop and they've already overcrowded those pots. I just do not get a break with the Agnon across the Marginata. This thing thrives like crazy. <laughs> Anywho, moving on to our ping or er, our Capensis here. Our lone Alba on the indoor side of things. Finally coming back up to health and looking like a little mini palm tree. Doing fantastic. Speaking of, you can see how they really do get that palm tree look, honestly. They just, they look fantastic, honestly. I love Capensis, one of my favorite sundews. Uh, and then, uh, you, of course, we've got our Utricularia, our Sandersani Peter's Rabbit over here. One lone flower, just one. It's the only flower it's gotten in almost a year since I've had it, or, well, quite a few months since I've had it, but it has no problem producing all these, like, little ivy-like tubers all over the place. I mean, it just loves to spread but it doesn't like the flower for some reason. Meanwhile, our Bisquamata on the other hand has no problem just flowering like crazy. Um, and not only did it spread like crazy, as you can see, it's kind of over there in that cape, it's just taken over that entire corner. I mean, not that our Sandersani hasn't spread, because it has, as you can see a little bit there, but our Bisquamata just, yeah, you see the difference. Anywho, that's been today's update, guys, and uh, I apologize for taking so long to produce an update, and I do apologize that the previous version of this update did not uh, come in via full quality for some reason. It came in for only 240p rather than its full 4k, so I don't know what was up with that, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the update, and I apologize for the day. Catch you guys all next time, and peace out.